So today we're going to talk about superhuman social skills as a summary by Michael George Knight. So this is um, the article is by Michael George Knight and the book per se is by, I can't actually tell. <laughs> it's probably going to be in the uh, description and or in the title of the video and or the podcast. So I'm sorry. Um, I do really want to go through something that has something to do with relationships, communication, all of these things, since it is something that's incredibly interesting to me, incredibly fucking interesting, just also because you can use it, as well as the whole body language things that uh, we went through and that we've been talking about, really interesting to me. Um, also how it just plays with psychology and stuff like that. But yeah, anyway, I think we're just going to go ahead. And by the way, we are on the bestbookbits.com site. It is a site that I don't know for long, actually. You know, it's a very recent thing for me, but I, I haven't been on it for for quite some time, to really be honest. Actually, because, um, and let's do it like this, um, because I, I don't know. Like, I first of all think that, I don't know, it, it seems a little bit cheap, but I don't really think it is. This is the point. And I mean, it's free information. It is uh, some good book summaries and the relatively long ones, which is good most often. And therefore, I appreciate it. And therefore, like, hmm, why shouldn't I go through it? Um, but yeah, but I just really don't like the cover of superhuman social skills. Maybe I, let's actually, superhuman social skills. And by the way, I do think about buying Samuel Thomas Davis. They also have a summary of that. And it is by Tynan. T-Y-N-A-N is the author. The more I know. Good. But yeah, anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead. There is also an audio version of the summary. So if you want to check it out, please check it out by the original maker. So best book bits. And there's also a YouTube video on that. So if you want to check it out, check it out. And if not, then not. And the, the other episode that I'm going to record is probably also going to be about something relatively similar. It's going to be about, you know, maybe just psychology. Maybe it's also going to be about communication. Maybe it's going to be about something else. I don't know. And uh, But we are going to see the five big ideas. The first one, how we portray ourselves to others will define their experience of who we are. And I do want to point out that it is indeed something that makes sense. And it is indeed something that's not really new. And it's probably not going to be new for you as well. But I think a big problem of that is that it really easily gets into a very bad space, at least at my point of view, meaning that, okay, you know, I'm going to really just emphasize how other people are going to have a look at me and how people are seeing me. Um, I don't know, if you're only concentrating on that, then uh, maybe you're losing yourself, you know, maybe you're not you anymore. And um, and I don't know, it, it also feels like just trying to fake things. You know, I'm just gonna just portray myself as this person just because other people are then gonna see me differently. Yeah, it might work, but but I just don't know. I don't really feel like that it is the right thing to recommend and also suggest. And I don't feel good recommending it and therefore I'm just pointing this out. The second thing is being a net addition is different than just not being a net negative. Being simply net neutral is often a negative as you are taking up an attendance slot that could have been used by someone else who could have been an addition. It is important to proactively add to social situations, which I think always makes sense. The third one, build a social circle that will both challenge and support you depending on what you need at the time. And the fourth, there are four main channels being communicated on all uh, at what on at all times: content, meta, emotion, and status or status. And the fifth one and last one is a master of communication must be able to have two major conversations: content and meta, while maintaining two minor conversations: emotion and status. So the superhuman social skills summary. And there is a bunch of quotes apparently and points, and it is relatively long as you can see relatively, you know, it's not just super duper long, but still um, pretty cool and pretty good. We change all the time, usually in imperceptible increments. So why not guide the change? Which is actually the case, like why not? By ensuring that you're always a net addition, even if you're not a huge one, you will dramatically increase the number of events to which you are invited. Which I, by the way, as I'm thinking about it, I do believe that it is that it is definitely the case. I mean, of course, I don't want to have this person at my size or in my circle or just in the circle of my friends or social circle, whatever. Um, 
that is giving me something, that is providing me with something. And and I don't know, I mean, it also feels good, you know, to be the one that, that helps other people, that adds something to the conversation, that adds something to the friendship, that adds something to whatever we're talking about. It feels just really good and sensical and, um, yeah. Content is what we think of when, uh, when we talk about communication superficially. I do want to repeat, content is what we think of when we talk about communication superficially. The meta channel is the undercurrent of the conversation. It is the meaning behind the meaning, the implication. Sometimes meta can be read in isolation, but it usually requires context. The emotion channel is more of a passive signal than an active channel. Well, yeah. Yeah. You know, because we uh, more often than not do not really regulate our emotions consciously. Therefore, it's indeed passive. At last, the status channel is constantly sending out clues about your or our relative status. Which, yeah, is definitely the case. Definitely. Status is a huge thing. Status is one of the reasons why people buy things. Brands, for example. Big cars, for example. Um, big watches. Expensive things. And um, But I do want to... Sometimes meta can be read in isolation, but it usually requires context. The meta channel is the undercurrent of the conversation. What does undercurrent mean? I do want to really get it. Uh, undertow, underflow, underswell, undertone, I just see. It's the meaning behind the meaning, the implication. What do they mean by implication? He didn't believe in what he was doing, suggestion. What? Suggestion, interference. Mm. The meaning behind the meaning. So why we... Hmm. Goes really deep, but yeah, makes sense, I guess. Uh, the, 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 the meta channel may be the most important of the four. The key thing to understand about the meta channel is that it is running all the time. The point of the meta channel is that it allows for shades of gray not afforded by the content channel. Communication on the meta channel also allows people to save face. The first step to communicating on the meta channel is to constantly ask yourself why people are saying the things they say. Which is, in general, I think a very interesting question because it's is probably going to lead to a lot of interesting answers since, okay, why is this person saying that? You know, maybe this person is saying that because he or she is feeling insecure. Um, why does this person feel insecure about or what is it? Uh, very interesting. You know, it leads to a lot of interesting thoughts and a lot of interesting um, also ideas and or discoveries, more or less. By making predictions and checking their accuracy later, you'll begin to calibrate your brain. Think about what you would like to communicate and decide whether it is better to do it on the content channel or the meta channel, which will make the other person feel more comfortable, which will give you more options, which gives them more, which gives them more options. A lot of conversation, uh, con conversing, I'm sorry, is taking the other person on an emotional journey. You think about where they are emotionally as well as where they want to be and you use the emotional channel to guide them there or keep them there if they want to stay in the same place. When you join a new friend group, you want to understand the hierarchy. As an outsider, it is important to maintain the harmony of the group and not disturb it. Because, of course, if you're disturbing it, they're going to be like, well, I don't like you. You know, Maybe they don't even know why they don't like you. But if you think about it, it just definitely makes sense. It really does. But I do want to have a look at the meta and uh, the... Uh, not the meta. What's the other one's the status? The content channel, yeah the meta and the content channel. I do want to have a look at these two things since they seem to be very important, but the explanation is not really superb, gotta have to say. Understanding someone's status is understanding how they view their place in the world. A lot of status is communicated non-verbally with body language and eye contact. Talking about high status, uh, about how high status you are, actually conveys low status. <laughs> well, um, and I kind of also believe in that, to really be honest. Vocal tone also communicates a lot about status, which is definitely the case. And you know, also body language, if you're really broad and if you're really like just, if you really look confident, I guess, then you really do have high status and you also think that you have high status. Whereas if you're just, you know, just crumble down, I don't even know if this is a word, but you know what I probably mean. Um, and if you just really don't feel or seem to be confident and feeling like that you are supposed to be in this place and you're supposed to be who you are and, and whatnot, then I think we all can see that you're not high in status. And also, if you're talking very confidently and if you're talking very, um, 
I wouldn't also say that, or I would also say that you're not communicating or talking very fast, but rather slow and distinct and, you know, just, I think people really can feel when somebody's confident. Maybe my thought about confidence and status is just too um, aligned, you know, but I don't know. I kind of feel like, well, if you're just uh, very confident in a certain position, then maybe or probably you do have high status as well because you wouldn't have that confidence if you were in high status, at least in your own hat. If you're just really high status also in the group, is then I think a, a group thing to, if you understand what I mean and what I'm going for. However, much of status is about what you will and won't accept from yourself and others. That can't be faked, but it can be changed. Disagreeing with everything is even worse, but expressing your own opinion in a clear and appropriate way conveys that you have the ability to think for yourself even in the presence of strong outside influence. You will be given respect for doing this. And therefore, I would say also more status. Be aware of what others are communicating on the status channel and avoid mannerism or habits that actually convey lower status. When you are introduced to someone or put into a social situation where people don't know you, your first goal should be to convey as quickly as possible what makes you interesting and worth knowing. By the which, you know, this shouldn't be done in a very douchey way, I think. You know, it should be done in a... I do think it's also just making you lower in status or it's also just... You know, it's also kind of, at least at my point of view, lowering your status if you, uh, if you just seem to be arrogant... It, I think it, it definitely depends on the people that you're with and the situation you're in and the whole hierarchy in things. Because, of course, there is going to be, quote-unquote, cultures and there is going to be um, situations and groups where arrogance might be seen as something that's uh, super-duper cool. You know, maybe arrogance in terms of, okay, arrogance being um, misjudged as confidence, you know. But it is actually arrogance and they think it is confidence, but it is not... Um, yeah, I think it also definitely comes up to the group and or the people and the society and stuff. Um, where have I been? When you are introduced to someone or put into a social situation where people don't know you, your first goal should be to convey as quickly as possible what makes you interesting and worth knowing. First impressions are made quickly and endure as subconscious biases for a very long time. Your primary tool for conveying who you are and making people interested is through your stories. When someone is getting to you, uh, is getting to know you, you want to become friends with them. Choose a story where the details highlight your positive attributes, which just makes sense. You know, of course, you're not going to be like, well, you know, I'm actually a very bad person. At least you're not just doing this initially, but of course, it is going to shine through. And I do think that being vulnerable in these spaces are also going to make you more likable, more human, and also maybe more respectable since you're actually being like, well, these are my faults, these are my flaws. But as we are talking about just first impressions and getting to know people, I wouldn't necessarily just be like, well, you know what, I do have really big aggression and I just hit everyone and I'm a fucking asshole and I'm just very stupid and uh, nah, you know, it's, it doesn't feel that well. But I think in the long term, it is something that's that's good. I believe in this. When telling a story, you should have three primary phases in order. The setup, the build-up, and the payoff. If you don't feel like you have a lot of interesting stories, a good exercise is to take a sheet of paper and write the letters of the alphabet down uh, the left side. Then come up with a short description of a story that begins with each letter. And there is an important rule that must be observed during all conversations, especially those involving banter. Always give the other person an out. What does banter mean? Repost Sally's sword, sword play quips with wisecracks of teasing remarks. That was a very good nature banter. Exchange remarks in a more teasing way. Okay, anyway. <laughs> in every conversation you have, you should maintain eye contact 80% 80% of the time or more. I see. Studies show that while controlling for other variables, eye contact causes people to like and trust each other. And therefore also something that I've read a million years ago quite is if you're talking about something negative, don't have eye contact with the person since the, it is going to be portrayed onto you. It's going to be displayed on you. If you're talking about something negative to another person, then they are associating this negative thing with you or something similar. Not quite sure, but it has something to do with that. So therefore, um, 
but it makes sense. I mean, you could, you seem to be connecting with people if you just really uh, keep the eye contact. But therefore, okay, if you're having a negative thing or a negative conversation or whatnot, then it just really makes sense to, to not have eye contact. Your goals in a conversation are to make sure that the other person enjoys themselves, to allow them to learn about you and for you to learn about them. But I would say it is for you to learn about them and then them learning about you. Because I'm a very big fan of listening and um, letting people talk and not just being the one that is talking all the fucking time. When you're talking, uh, taking conversational responsibility of a group, it is your obligation to make sure that everyone is involved in the discussion. Which, by the way, is something that I really like to do. Being like, well, you know, what do you think about that? You know, I would like to just really have your opinion. It, it feels good. It is a great thing. And it, I think it also can portray your fucking status as well. You know, if you are the person that is leading, quote unquote, the whole conversation. It feels like, hmm. It feels like you know you know shit and stuff, you know. Remember that there is a difference between someone liking you and someone being impressed by you. Impressing can uh, alienate, but you won't run into any problems making people like you. However, you define yourself, add happy and positive to the beginning of that description and be that version of yourself. People will decide how much time to spend with you primarily based on how they feel when they are around you, which just definitely makes sense, I guess. Uh, one of your top social priorities should be helping others meet their future best friends. I do just in general think whether it is a love relationship or something else that it is all about just win-win situations, you know. But especially when it is about love relationships. Um, among your first thoughts upon getting to know someone should be, who do I know who would love this person? Who of the people I know would they love? You want to be the person who any of your friends can introduce to anyone they know and be sure that it will make them look good. You want to be the person. Yeah, makes sense. Just be a cool person. Be an amazing person. Just be interesting. Be. It's, it's not just. Just is a very fucked up word and I don't like to use it in a very, 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 um, um, and well, actually many instances. But... But I don't know, it makes sense, you know, be a friendly person, be a, be a person that is able to deal with other people, be an interesting person, be a person that has personality, um, an own opinion, and an interesting opinion, and all sorts of things, you know, I do not really want to say that you should portray yourself as being the coolest motherfucker in the whole world, you know, I could have, I, I could actually kind of just play that role, okay, you know, I, I have been uh, having a podcast for three years and YouTube channel, and I'm also having done music, and I have just written a book, do you want to buy it, and uh, all sorts of fucking shit, and of course, I could portray myself as a, not not necessarily successful, because I don't want to lie, but as somebody that is just uh, having a lot to do, and so many hobbies, and I don't know, you know what I mean, I could do so, but it's it's not necessarily something that I'm just trying to aim for, it is like, well, you know, I do this and I do that and I just, whatever. I don't, anyway, it's not about me, it's about that thing. Um, choose friends not because of what they can do for you, but because you love who they are. Love that. Uh, one easy way to stand out is to find positive attribute, attributes that most people don't have and then build them. Be extremely vigilant about when you tell someone that you're going to do something. Make it a personal goal to follow up as soon as possible and to never fail to do it. If you're consistently honest, even at the risk of inviting disagreement, your friends can trust everything you say, including the good things. Honesty takes bravery because it makes you vulnerable to criticism from others. And the last one is, a leader has one main function, to further the interests of the group. Shout out to Samuel Thomas Davis for doing this writing summary. <laughs> to buy the book, click. <laughs> well, 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 you know, I, I gotta actually have to check it out. Fuck. Gotta have to check out whether it is actually the complete same. <laughs> God, the... I, I gotta have to say, like, the, the cover is so ugly. The cover is really ugly. I haven't seen such an ugly cover in a really long time. Um... I think it is the exact same thing, yeah. Yeah, it's the exact same thing. Anyway, so I do think that I'm actually gonna... Which one should I... I think I'm gonna link down this one. Since the... Uh, it looks better, the website looks better. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say that. But still, it is impressive how ugly this cover is. 
Number one in social skills and number one in business communication. Well, I do have to say, like, it is a cool, interesting book, but let's actually check that out. Um, Meta and content channel. Maybe I'm able to quickly find something. Why metadata is important for YouTube channel SEO? Well, well, communication, meta communication, meta learning. Uh, what if I just only content channel, communication channels, which ones are the most used? Let's see. Communication channels, because I've expected actually something different. Like, you know, there is nonverbal, verbal, and that's quite it. <laughs> um, index, social media. Oh, well, of course, these are also communication channels. Omnichannel communication, right content, right channel, marketing, communi communication. Um, tough one. Pretty tough one. I would actually really like to find something. Uh, super human so shell skills. Maybe we can actually find a picture. This would be am amazing. I do think I do have a slight feeling that it is kind of written by by not that of an, well, I don't want to say successful, you know, really don't want to say so, but, but why do they also have it two times? Superhuman by, oh, superhuman by habit. Oh, it is written by the same person. As I, I think I've actually already went through this one once on becoming superhuman, tiny on becoming super. Maybe I just really want to know what deep dive. Well, there is a video. Career, not having will, what is up in the morning, cruise ships, with human social skills, books, the truth behind being a pickup artist and being yourself, no matter. Uh, so there is an interview. There is an interview. Um, but yeah, I'm actually unable to find something, at least uh, what I'm looking for. But I do want to read the first bits again. So content is what we think of when we talk about communicating superficially. But what does that mean? <laughs> And the meta channel is the undercurrent of the conversation, is the meaning behind the meaning. Why are you saying something? Because of this, and why this? Because of that. Ah. Uh, hmm. Maybe this is maybe this is what he means. If he says the undercurrent of the conversation is the meaning behind the meaning, the implication, like, and um, we are saying something because of a reason, but most often this reason just takes us back to something completely different or something quote unquote additional. You know, um, I might be just asking for, uh, you know, I might be asking how this person is doing just so that the other person asks me how I'm doing, but it is not about them asking me how I'm doing, but it is about me. Uh, it is about me communicating my thoughts and being in a spotlight, if this makes sense. You know, it's, it's a superficial and, uh, maybe not really real example, but I think it is the exact same thing. Like, okay, um, I'm asking somebody just uh, because I want to be asked back. This might be actually something conscious actually, but then subconsciously it is actually the case that I want to be asked back just because I do want to be in a spotlight and I want to be the one with all the attention and stuff like that. So, so yeah, I mean, and then if you know that, if you figured it out, then you can actually indeed communicate and be like, well, you know, let's just talk about you, you know, what are you doing? And then they're going to feel better and they're going to like you. For example, for example, um, the whole content thing is what we think when we talk about communication superficially. I know maybe somebody of you can actually help me. I don't actually know. Um, emotions, of course, make sense. And status, of course, also makes sense. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The next book is definitely also going to be about something similar. This is what I've decided right now. So yeah, I wish you best health of happiness and all success, and also hope that you're going to remind yourself and you're going to be remembered. It's basically means your legacy basically means just being a nice person and being remembered as a nice person, which is a pretty fucking cool thing. Three other questions that I have you are why are you here? What are you trying to change and what is bothering you? There must be three questions. Hopefully, going to show you your purpose and maybe even a business which is a pretty fucking cool thing. 
three other questions that I have for you. Oh, one question that I have for you is, what could you specifically and most of all say that is going to change somebody? Because I believe that we all can say something and that we all can uh, spread something. And then, yeah, what is it? And yeah, with that being said, I'm hopefully going to see you the next time. Bye bye. And um, yeah, please stay safe and healthy. And I also do hope that your family is staying safe and healthy as well. So 